Hello, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Rita Walters. Uh, welcome to our uh, Happy New Year's Eve. Uh, welcome to our last edition of Knowledge and Nourishment for the calendar year. Um, it is so delightful to be here. And as I mentioned, I'm Rita Walters. I'm Vice President for Development and Alumni Relations here at Union Theological Seminary. And we're so, so happy that you've joined us today. You're in for a real treat. Um, and I'm gonna turn things over to Serene Jones. We're gonna do a year in review, just to sort of set the stage. We're gonna do a year in review. And we're also, she's gonna talk about that. We're gonna show a little bit of a video montage and, and a highlight. Of course, we're gonna leave out some important things. We already know that. So please charge that to our head and not to our hearts. Um, and also um, many of you have sent in silver linings for this year. So we're gonna share some of those silver linings. And those of you who didn't have a chance to do so in advance, we're gonna welcome you to join the conversation around 1230 when we'll open up the mics. Um, at this time, we ask that you mute yourselves if you may, please. Um, and if you would like, uh, once we show the video, so it can be in full screen and you can take advantage of the entire experience, you may wanna look to your upper right where it says view. And there are three bars there. There's sort of a single bar, a thick double bar, uh, a thick bar single um, in the middle, and then two bars at the end. So to your furthest right. If you click on um, speaker view for now, so you can hear Serene's talk. But once we start the video, if you actually click on that, the, the first bar, you'll take in the whole um, the video in a really nice way, I hope. Okay, without any further ado, um, I would like to introduce you, introduce to you and present to others Dr. Serene Jones, president of Union Theological Seminary. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Serene. Thank you, Rita. And it's so wonderful to look at the screen and see so many friends. Um, Ruth and Beverly and Bill and Rhonda Joy and just so many, John, Tom Sires. Mm -hmm. And I'm only able to look at one screen at a, at the time, Susan, Mike Maloney. Uh, Good to see your face. Um, so it's wonderful to have a chance to talk with everyone today. Um, as I'm sure it has been for each of you, this past year at Union is uh, one that, as I said in my Christmas note, we are very happy to be uh, getting ready to look at it in the rearview mirror. Um, it has been a year that has been trying for the school um, at the same time that it's been also a phenomenal year. Um, we, will never, we will never forget um, the event that happened in mid-February uh, before we had an inkling of the pandemic that was coming. Um, and we hosted on our campus uh, as the Judith Davison Moyers Lecture, Woman of Spirit for the year, uh, the Honorable Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, as far as we know, um, this was her last public speaking engagement, and it was a, an amazing experience for everyone. Uh, she was interviewed by Bill Moyers um, on stage um, in front of a packed James Chapel, live streamed to hundreds, and at her insistence, we had a room packed full of students um, who after her lecture, she went and spent an hour um, talking with them individually and taking pictures with them. Uh, an indomitable woman, I don't need to tell you that. Um, but just a, a few of her, of her comments remain with me. Um, one of the, um, the cutest ones um, was, um, she asked uh, who were her role models when she was growing up? Um, Bill Moyers, and she responded that she had one that was um, a fantasy, one that was real, and one that was biblical. She said, of course, my fantasy one was Nancy Drew, um, and she said Nancy Drew um, did not wait around for the boys to solve the mysteries. She just got busy and took care of it herself. She said, secondly, uh, Amelia Earhart, who could not, she said, uh, be amazed by this woman who uh, did the impossible that men thought could not be done. And then the third, she said, uh, was the judge Deborah. She says, I didn't know what judges did, but I knew that in the Hebrew Bible, 
that Deborah was a judge and she was a very important person. And I knew when I grew up, I wanted to be like her. Um, and uh, boy, did she grow up to be um, a Deborah and more. Um, she also spent an evening having dinner at my house, having wonderful conversations about the future of the Supreme Court, about the future of our nation, uh, and about her dealings um, on the court with controversial cases. It was truly a historic evening at Union, and one in which every single part of the community participated in preparing for it. Um, from facilities who had the building spotless to the students who acted as ushers, um, to the faculty who turned out uh, for um, the presentation, uh, to the Office of Development and Communications that just did all of the behind the scenes legwork. Um, we had a children's chorus uh, lining the street, welcoming guests as they came in through the Claremont door of um, into the uh, vestibule of James Chapel. Um, so it was one of those evenings that is beyond the normal um, in the sense that it was elevated and in the sense that the joy in it was, was pure um, and was unadulterated. And you can imagine then that the special sadness that uh, Union experienced and all those who had time to see her experienced um, with her death um, and, and the subsequent um, debacle around the appointment of her um, replacement on the Supreme Court. I shouldn't use the word replacement because she can never be replaced. But that left us on a high um, and little did we know that a mere uh, three weeks later um, I would get a call from Columbia University and hear that uh, their department, their School of Public Health had made the determination that the COVID-19, which was a new word for us all to hear at that point, was going to be hitting New York City hard enough that we needed to close immediately. So with um, about three hours to prepare, I wrote the faculty and told them that they could teach for two more days, during which time they could prepare their students for the fact that after spring break, which was coming up, uh, um, they would come back to a fully remote union. Um, and it was remarkable uh, to see the entire faculty uh, with very little notice turn on a dime and for us to show up completely remotely um, for teaching. Um, everything was online. The staff, of course, immediately went online, except, and I'm so glad Mike Maloney is here with us, um, who uh, oversaw facilities through all of this, uh, the group that could not leave the campus and kept clean and kept present in those empty hallways of a school that's usually bustling with life was our facility staff. Um, they were there through it all. And I'm glad to say that our campus in terms of COVID um, has not been immune to cases, um, but has not um, faced a, a direct fatality of anyone um, who is student staff or faculty. Um, and we have not had a breakout on campus. Um, we had a very quiet summer as the faculty prepared for the fall we made an early decision to be remote, um, although I think I think Fordham is credited with being the first in New York City to make the decision to go remote. Uh, Union actually did it a week before Fordham, um, uh, seeing that there was no way that we could do an ethical opening. And we framed it as a question of ethics, and it wasn't just about our own health and safety, but in a way that is appropriate to Union about the health and safety of our neighbors, particularly given our location in what was going to be um, one of the hardest hit areas of New York City. So our decision to go remote, we had no idea that it would have to be eventually extended into the spring, um, which it is now we are still remote, um, but one which schools would follow throughout the summer. Um, it was a great decision insofar as it gave the faculty a full three months of preparation time. 
And it gave students who were admitted time to figure out whether or not um, they wanted to learn online or uh, whether or not they wanted to wait until we could be in person again. Um, we had, um, if we had been in person, we would have had a class of over a hundred. Um, because of the decision to go online, we ended up with a class of, of over 80. Um, so it, it was just amazing to me and my silver fur lining. I said I had the chance uh, to look at the incoming class. Um, I taught an intro to theology course um, in September. We did a short course as we got ready for the fall. And I got to teach 60 of those 80 students. And to, to have students make the decision to come to seminary in the midst of a pandemic um, and to have made that decision when New York was in the midst of being hardest hit to me was a sign of, of, of just how important the work that Union does in the world is, but even more just how resilient and determined our students are. Um, which looking at the screen, I know that many of you were at your point in time, uh, one of those determined students. Um, we also had another milestone in the fall um, in that um, October 5th, we were able to open a completely newly renovated Hastings Hall, um, which I'm sure many of you on this phone have uh, spent a lot of time in. Um, we hear many Hastings Hall stories are out there. Um, as uh, you no doubt know, over the years, the needs of students have changed and the building was crumbling. So we've renovated it so that it has a lot more studios and suites in addition to dorm floors, but areas where students with family or, or adult students can um, have more privacy, but we also have on every floor a, fel a fellowship area um, and a common space and a common kitchen. Um, it's just beautiful to look at and I cannot wait until the pandemic is over and I can invite you all to campus to come and see this magnificent renovation. Um, uh, sadly, we have about, it's, I actually, I think it's good for the students who are there, but we have about 25 students um, living there this year, um, international students or students who um, uh, decided to come to New York and live in the space. Um, they have whole floors to themselves in some cases, um, and they're loving it, um, being in this beautiful new building. Uh, but we look forward to having it packed with students. It can hold about 150 students. So we're looking forward to the fall um, when we can fill it up with uh, students coming to Union and um, becoming part of the community. The renovations process um, continues. Um, in uh, July, the construction of the new building that's in the northwest corner of the courtyard began in earnest. Um, the foundation has now been laid and um, uh, next week they, the building actually starts being constructed um, going up. We have a huge crane um, right off of Claremont and uh, we expect the new building to be finished uh, in the spring of 2023 so that when students return in the fall of 2023, um, it will be all done and the cranes will have disappeared and the noise will have quieted down. Um, I guess one silver lining of uh, being remote was that, <coughs> excuse me, the noisiest part of the whole construction, which was pounding the pilings to hold the building up into the schist that uh, Morningside Heights sits on, um, was not heard or disruptive. Uh, because there was no one on campus to hear it. So we, we were well past that stage. Um, we had a wonderful fall. Um, the faculty uh, have in many cases, um, much to my own surprise, uh, really risen to the occasion of teaching online and enjoyed it. Um, some of our faculty who said, oh, they just can't possibly imagine teaching online have you know, come up to me and said, I want to do more online teaching. Um, one in particular, I think of Brigitte Call, our professor of New Testament, um, who uh, was uh, taught biblical studies in Germany, uh, is East German by birth, um, just was 
totally traumatized by the thought that she would have to teach students online. And now she loves it so much, she wants to be able to do it more often. Um, I use her as just one example. And the students have adapted very well um, alongside the professors. We try to develop models where we don't just take a lecture course and then do the lecture online and have the students sit and listen, but really try to build models that are much more interactive um, so that students have time to meet each other um, and to interact with the professor in a way that creates the kind of community and connectivity that makes Union such a special place. And I think of all the things we've missed, that is what we've missed the most. Um, I think it's true for everyone. I don't even probably need to say it, but it's that kind of shared energy that happens in a classroom and in the hallways um, and in the refectory um, and um, in the dorm lounge uh, that makes Union the very special place that it is in so many ways. But one of the other good things to come out of our move online is our taking a step forward into the world of online degrees. Um, we are working in two areas uh, that we hope to continue after the pandemic is gone. Um, we are working on a new plan to offer certificates, which are just four courses that students can take in any number of areas, um, social justice, theological studies, interreligious engagement, spiritual care, um, Anglican studies um, are just some of the ones that we have picked out. Um, you can take four courses and get a certificate of completion. And I think of this as the put your toe in the water of union. Um, we've done a lot of market research and believe that these will be quite popular because they don't require the same level of financial commitment or they don't require also um, moving to New York or giving up your full-time job um, in order to see if union is for you. Now we're also working on a full, um, fully online uh, master's program that's 36 hours that will be a master's of arts in social justice. Um, which will have six core courses um, and then six elective courses. So it'll be a 12 course degree. Um, we have all the approvals for that and we're just now working closely with the faculty um, to put that together. When we did our market survey, um, it came up uh, in terms of the people surveyed that uh, spirituality and economic justice, spirituality and racial justice um, and religion and ecology uh, were the three most popular areas that people were interested at this moment in time um, in studying at Union. And that brings me um, to another very important piece of our time at Union, and that was our very steady involvement as students, as faculty and staff um, in the Black Lives Matter movement um, that began with the harp that began um, actually many years ago, you can, you can trace its roots back even um, over a hundred years, but uh, it began in earnest um, in Ferguson um, where Union sent students now um, eight years ago and then most recently with the horrible murder of George Floyd. Um, we've all been out on the streets in New York and been very much a part of that movement and have become convinced um, being part of that movement that our whole nation, um, because of the pandemic, uh, because of the racial reckoning that is happening. And I think also because of the huge wake up call um, that the Trump administration and the Trump years um, gave to the whole country about who we are, mm. um, and what we aspire to be, um, was a wake up call that the changes that are ahead of us are not just policy changes. The changes that our nation needs to undergo are deep changes that have to do with the story we tell ourselves about who we are and who we aspire to be, an ethical change, a deeply moral change, a spiritual change, a change of heart in the most profound way. And that is what union teaches students 
and future leaders to be able to engage at that level in the work of changing the stories we tell ourselves as communities about who we are and what we want the world to be and how we together work to create that. Um, so I've never been more excited about uh, being the president of Union. I tell people I have the best job in the world. Uh, it's such an exciting place to be. And, um, you know, different schools have different moments in time in which what they're doing matches up with what the world needs. Mm -hmm. And now is Union's time. Um, that what Union does is not something that happens off in a small little corner somewhere. Um, as someone referred to it, Union is, we're not just that little seminary next to big old Riverside. No, we are actually a hugely important institution with a historic legacy and a future commitment to educating future leaders with religious depth and a moral compass and ethical capacities uh, that this world needs at this moment in time. We are, I like to think, union strong. Um, in terms of the year ahead, we have another semester of teaching remotely that spirit of Union Strong. We have renovations that will continue. Um, in the base of the new building, we will be building a, um, a walk, a cloister walk, like the cloister uh, hallways that go around, um, go north from, go south from the entryway and by the pit and go um, up towards James Chapel. We'll now complete that finally um, with a northern uh, cloister walk. Um, there's going to be the build out of a beautiful space that, e that will be EDS's, but also shared by the whole campus in the base of the new building. And then in the new building, there will be five floors of brand new faculty apartments. So the whole faculty will be moving into the building as a mixed use building. Then we're gonna be renovating the Undercroft area of James Chapel with a new smaller chapel um, that will be used, uh, I think on a daily basis, can be used for morning prayer, evening prayer, and for different kinds of multi-faith services. Um, we're building a new dining hall underneath uh, James Chapel. And, uh, and then when you get to the admin and Auburn building, we'll have a new student center and continue on up the building as we get our classrooms and our offices uh, ready for the 21st century. And of course, as you can imagine, we're having amazing conversations that we would not have had pre-COVID about the nature of work. Mm -hmm. What kind of offices do we need for people? Are we imagining ourselves continuing to just have um, a five day a week, everyone on board all the time? Um, schedule of how staff work or do we have a sense of what it might mean to have rotating schedules? So some online work, some in-person work. How do we equip classrooms for a world in which probably within the next two years we're going to have forms of virtual reality where you can actually have students online who look like, if you put the glasses on, they're sitting in the classroom with you. How do we prepare classrooms that can do that? How do we build studios where faculty can go to do their classes and record their lectures? Um, all of the opportunities that we now have to design a 21st century campus um, that can rise to the needs of our world in this moment in time is before us. So it couldn't be a better moment for us to be making the decisions about the nature of our um, educational platform and the way we move forward um, technologically. Wow. So I would be remiss to not end by just uh, thanking Rita for organizing this today and our whole uh, development team, which works so hard um, at, uh, at uh, creating these knowledge and nourishment conversations. And I hope that as you listen to everything that's happening, um, so many of you are already our most faithful supporters. Mm -hmm. um, you are making this education possible. 
you are the reason why students are still walking through the doors of Union. Absolutely. Because they have a scholarship support they need. Um, and I want to thank you, uh, each of you, for that support. And I'm going to turn it over to Rita. Right. Thank you. Uh, I know I just looked at the clock and I've talked for a whole half hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's perfectly okay, Serene. That was really, really wonderful. And when you talk about that this is the time for union, this is also the time for all of us who want, work under your amazing, amazing leadership. This is the time for you. And we are so grateful. And I think I speak on behalf of all of my colleagues and we have board colleagues who are on the phone, I were on Zoom as well. And I'm sure they will echo this, that we are so grateful for your leadership and for guiding us with such a steady hand. You're absolutely right. We had three hours and you made such a strong decision quickly. You gave us the confidence that we can actually do this. And you, you really encouraged us in so many ways to leverage our radical imaginations to make this possible for our students. Because as you remind us day in and day out, they deserve our very best effort. And we thank you, thank you, thank you um, for leading the way in that effort. I wanted to use this time to make, yep, so bravo, right? You can't hear everyone clapping, but we are. <laughs> so you have to believe that. Um, we wanted to use this time, if Kevin is ready, to really reflect what um, Serene just said about that sort of year looking back. Um, and this moment is dedicated to our long-term colleague, Hubier, who passed away actually today, this time last year. Before we show um, our uh, screening, it's gonna take about two to three minutes. Um, I wonder if Mike Maloney would unmic, I'm sorry, to unmic his mic, um, and maybe have a word or so to say about our esteemed colleague. Wow, I feel like I'm being put on the spot, but uh, give an Irishman a microphone, he'll think of something to say. <laughs> um, may he rest in peace. Hoover. Uh, was our house plumber. Um, he was elevated to that position during my tenure at Union. He was previously in the position of the uh, custodian in charge of McGifford Hall. So everybody knew him because we really housed a lot of people there. And of course, the faculty and several staff members lived there. So everybody knew who there he was a very good family man. Um, that was his number one goal in his life was just to make sure his family was taken care of. I knew him intimately as I do all of my staff. He had a son that had an ear problem where they were trying to grow an ear on one of his arms because he didn't have an ear. So stuff like that. And I spoke to him every day about how the family was doing. Um, but being a plumber in Union with the 100-year-old pipes was probably the most difficult job at Union. And um, he did it. He did it well, and he did it to the best of his ability. Uh, he never said no to a job. And he was just a good family man, a dedicated person. He punched in at eight o'clock is when he started work, but he was at the building at 7.15 on a regular basis for the 20 years that I know him. So um, sadly, two or three weeks after he passed, his wife passed also, maybe a month later, um, they both died from cancer. So um, we did... Uh, I did go to a service in Astoria that was dedicated to him um, where his ashes were laid and I met his children and it was, and the, and the staff all came. It was sad, like any event like that would be. Um, but his legacy at Union lives on in the pipes that continue to flush water anywhere they need to. And um, I can only say that I wish him peace in his afterlife and that his wife joined him shortly thereafter. Um, and I hope that his family and children find the peace. And that's it. Yeah. 
Mike, thank you. Thank you so much. Kevin, if you are ready, and this um, PowerPoint presentation, it's dedicated to our colleague, Hubert. Huge thanks to our development department who really um, spent our respite finding um, all the videos and I'm sorry, not videos, but all of the photographs to help make this possible. And a huge thanks to Joe Letourneau, who's the artist who helped inspire this entire presentation. Um, so thank you all. Um, at this time, Serene, would you mind just using a moment? We were, we're gonna go to a video around silver linings. And one of the things that we're so inspired around Silver Linings this year is a partnership that um, because of Serene that we happen to be involved in. And Serene um, can talk more about this, but Serene, might you talk about 2020 visions? And I think Carrie Lovelace may be on here. Um, so it'd be good to, if she had a, just a word to say or a sentence or two, um, but it's, it really empowered us to think positively, to really leverage our imagination, to think about the future in a different way. We all know that 2020 was really hard, um, but this partnership, I think even further, it's inspired a uh, union. Um, Serene, I'll turn it over to you. Great, I don't, I don't if, if Carrie's on, I'd love to uh, hear Carrie also. Um, so this is a project that was um, almost two years in the making. It was originally designed to be um, on the campus of Union, um, but it ended up being even better as a virtual event. Um, and it was one in which 
um, working with Carrie Lovelace, uh, who is um, a New York based uh, screenwriter, artist, and real leader in the arts community. We pulled together a three day symposium on um, the new city um, and thinking about what the future city is going to look like um, using the imaginations of artists and practitioners, um, engineers, architects, um, plumbers, um, farmers, um, putting artists together with people who know how to make things work and imagining what cities are going to look like, uh, particularly in the face of migration and climate change. Uh, and it was at an off the charts, amazing event of beauty and thrilling excitement. And I learned so many things about the future of the kind of technology that awaits us uh, that I think the whole school was really challenged to think about the future of theology in light of the future of the new city. Great, thank you. So I was just told that Carrie may have had to leave. Um, Carrie, if you're here, do you mind saying hello? We'll give that a moment or so, a breath. Okay, so if not, maybe she had to leave us. Um, if not, this is a great time to show our 2020 silver lining um, video. So we'd we'll love to have you indulge us for that moment. And as you're watching this video, think about what your own 2020 um, silver linings are. You can put those in the chat or you can, we'll unmute ourselves in a moment at, immediately following this video. You can ask whatever questions you would like or, um, or just tell us what your silver lining has been for 2020. Um, we're scheduled to end this at 1245. So we will not be offended if anyone has to hop off right at 1245, we certainly understand. Um, we're willing to go um, about another five to 10 minutes if that's possible, if the conversation sort of lends itself to that. And so if that's okay, um, we, we invite you um, to stay on. If you have to go at 1245, we certainly, certainly understand. But happy new year to you. Happy, happiest new year of all. Uh, we will end with a prayer and we'll, we'll have Serene do the prayer. Why don't we have, um, it's 1240. Uh, let's watch the video, have Serene do the prayer, and then we'll go right into the Q&A. Okay, that's okay. Right. So Kevin, if you're ready.
Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all. Um, um, Serene, would you like to lead us in prayer? Yes. Thank you, Rita. And thank you for that inspiring set of inspirations. Um, let us join together in prayer. Most gracious God, spirit of hope, we give you thanks for this day as we bring to a close this year with all of its pain, its revelations, its discoveries, and its possibilities. And wherever we may be, be we standing in the sunshine or on a snow-covered mountain, let us join together our hearts in gratitude for the gift of this life and give us the strength and courage and wisdom to use it to serve our neighbors, our friends, our communities, our enemies, the world the space in which we live together. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so now, friends, uh, this is the time. Um, this is your time. And this is open for you. You can unmite yourself. And if you have a question, we can do a couple of things. You can put it in the chat if that's your preference. Um, you can just sort of speak out loud. Or if you have to go, we understand that too. You have to leave. Um, but also, I think we have um, our board chair may also be on the line. I know our development chair is also on the line. So Bill Candelera, I think he is here. He may have a word or two for us, perhaps. Um, and so may uh, Rhonda Joy McLean as well. I think we have another board member. I'm just sort of screening um, through. So, but if anyone would like to offer anything, we're welcome. Shout out to the chair of the... Um board of EDS, John Rabb, who was on. Oh, John Rabb, yes, yeah. I think, he, I think he might have left, but uh, what a great year of partnering with EDS. And we could do a whole Zoom call just on the wonders of that partnership. So even though John's gone, shout out to John. Yeah, and we have Connie who has said to all of us, a missing mention um, of Cairo's Poor People's Campaign, Leo Theo Harris. Um, this is such an important part of union and what it and what's meaningful me, meaningful for me. And I think you speak for all of us, Connie. So thank you for sharing that. Yeah. And I think there was someone about to say something. This is uh, Bill Candelaria. I don't have my video on because those of you who've seen my, how long my hair is, it's like sort of a mess <laughs> until I get a haircut. But uh, I just want to thank again, uh, Serene for her leadership. Um, I think uh, we made it through a very tough year thanks to her vision and her uh, optimism. And I thank all the trustees that worked so hard over the year to fundraise and obviously the staff and faculty for keeping the school open. Uh, and I'm very thankful also to our students who showed up. Um, I think there was a point where we thought, well, people not come to Union if they can't be at Union. And I think what Serene said is true. We're, we're not a place, we're an institution. And the, that is a silver lining for me in that I see union being more resilient now than it's ever been. Thank you and happy new year all. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, I'd like to share uh, one of the favorite quotes that Serene gave. My name is Reverend Susan File and I'm a student of Serene's from Yale and, and then I graduated at Union for, with an STM uh, 2017. And Serene said way back in June, uncertainty is a rising up in creativity not a falling down. Mm. I love that. Uncertainty is a rising up in creativity, not a falling down. And Serene, I can't thank you enough for that. It got me through the year, the last six months. And I want to thank you for that. And I'm <laughs> so grateful. Thank you. Great to see you. <laughs> I see Nancy Jennings, our another colleague, board colleague of ours. Yes, um, I'll just say um, I've just been incredibly grateful for the creative ways in which Union has continued to form community, which is one of the best things that Union does, because in that way, we all feel connected and we grow. So thank you to everyone on this call for, for mm -hmm. our, our little Union 
community that spreads out <laughs> all over the country, all over the world. Thank you. On that front, um, I'd like to thank Rita, who has done an amazing job in development and in alumni relations. Um, that is not an easy job. And you, you just hit the you just hit the ramp and took over and then this all happened. And Nancy's right, you have really helped build community. Um, and that, that video makes me wanna go back to the place right away. So. <laughs> right. Thank exactly, you. Ruth, thank you. It is, it, I, I'm only the face because I happen to be the one standing here, but Shana, Luke, Kevin, Leah, Ian, Ian is, developed, is a communications who just is such a partner, he and Robin. Oh, yes. And it's just on and on and on it goes. And we cannot do that without the leadership of Rhonda Joy McLean, who leads us in every step of the way. So thank you all. Okay. But so if some of you are like me, that you may not have had a chance to read all of the writing for Silver Linings, we did not want to really edit people. So sometimes I read the first sentence and the last, but don't tell anyone that. <laughs> That's why I got through college some, in some courses. <laughs> but, um, but we are going to, we'll make sure you actually get a copy of the entire thing. We'll post it. This is already streaming live, I think, Ian, on uh, YouTube and others, so you can go back and really slow it down to see it. But we're happy to send it to you too. And for all of those who participated in that, thank you so very much. Um, Serene, I'll give you the last word if there, if we hear. No well, it's just wonderful to be with this community on the last day of this year, <laughs> 2020. We will no longer after this day be able to say 2020 um, and May, um, May the 2020 recede behind us even more quickly than we thought possible. Um, and may we anticipate the future with joy and a sense of the coming of justice. And thank you all for being the family of union and all that that means. So happy new year. Thank you. Happy new year. Happy new year. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks everyone. Bye. Bye, thank you. Mm -hmm.